Welcome to another episode of Prep Stutters. If you've followed us very long, you know how passionate I am about all of us starting our own version of a covert garden. So if you'd like, you could consider this another in installment in that mission. Today, I'm gonna talk to you about how to take these wonderful little chestnuts, which we don't have too many of here in the United States anymore, and turn them into this, and even turn them into this. I can't tell you of a more incredible nutrition source that can feed you and your whole family in the days to come. <laughs> Don't go away. So this story starts back at Christmas time when I knew I wasn't going to be able to go home to Oregon to be with my family like I do every year. And I was gonna find myself here at home, but I do have a little fireplace and I do have friends. And that's all you need if you have some chestnuts to roast to make it exciting. So I invited my friends over and a few weeks before they came, I ordered online a couple of bags full of the biggest plumpest chestnuts I could find online to roast over an open fire. You may have watched that episode, and if you haven't, we'll link it above and below this. So I want you to go back there. It's very simple to roast these into the most amazing snack at Christmas time. It's just fantastic, and especially if you have friends to share it with you. But chestnuts are a tree that are almost wiped out here in the United States. In fact, you would hardly believe me when I tell you this statistic but I mean it. Back about 70 or 80 years ago, there was a blight that came through and killed over 5 billion chestnut trees here in the United States. I know that's hard to even comprehend. And we hear of chestnut wood in the old um, barns and log homes that are still standing around our country, but there are not any live chestnut trees. So those of us who find out about that are extra passionate about getting them started again so that we can repopulate our country with one of the best, strongest, tallest trees that used to compete for, with oak trees as one of the most common trees found across the country. But I like it because I'm into covert gardening, as I mentioned, and chestnut trees are going to offer you and your family one of the most nutritious foods that you can have growing out there in the wild that no one would even recognize as something to be intimidated by or to come raid. You have your own source of food. Let me talk just a little bit about them you need to get some chestnuts. And I ordered mine, I believe from Turkey, just so you know. You wanna get the strongest, healthiest, freshest that you're able to. And yes, they are kind of expensive. My bags that I purchased at Christmas were $30 each. And they only each contained, I believe, oh, I think it was one and a half pounds. I don't know. I probably mentioned it in that episode and you can go back and verify. But that's a lot to pay for chestnuts and it should give your wheels turning that you might be able to use this as a cash crop for yourself in the future if you wanted to sell your chestnuts one day down the line. However, you start by getting some of your own and make sure you have chestnuts and not horse chestnuts two totally different things, and I will say they look almost identical, except horse chestnuts are very poisonous and you don't want to eat those. And let me tell you the very simplest way I have found to tell the difference. Yes, they might look a lot alike, but chestnuts have this telltale tail on them. In other words, there is this little pointy tail, which is absolutely not found on horse chestnuts. They look almost identical in every other way, but they are rounded on the bottom. Where chestnuts grow, they have a point. And that is the magic that we're going to see make these wonderful trees that you can plant for yourself and get going. Right now I have about 15. And as we film this, we're at the end of April, which means since Christmas time, it has not taken very long for me to take the, those chestnuts that I bought that were left over after we roasted and ate all that we could. I took them each one and I washed them well and inspecting to make sure none look like they have holes in them or anything weird or unusual. 
when you rinse them, you'll notice that if you let the bowl fill with water, the ones that are probably less likely to be viable are going to float to the top. And so just to be safe, go ahead and take all the ones that float, just get them out of there and only work with the ones that sink quickly to the bottom. Now, you know I'm not normally a plastic loving person, but in this case, a little plastic container like this Sterlite uh, box I have actually is gonna make the perfect little greenhouse for these to be stored away in. Fill the bottom of it with either some wet paper towels or wring out a good wet dish towel. Spread it in the bottom and then you're going to want to spread the chestnuts out. And if you can, go ahead and give them each their own little amount of space. If you've got just a few, go ahead and spread them out so they have breathing room. But I have a lot of them here, so I'll go ahead and tuck them in next to each other, trying my best not to stack them on top of each other and keeping the flat side down as best as possible. You'll see other people do it different ways and I'm sure there's probably no perfect way that is, is right or wrong on this. But once you've got them all in there, I'm going to cover them over with a dry towel and that's gonna just make sure that they don't get too much moisture. And we wanna check it every now and then. And, and if I need to rinse these again with vinegar to keep the mold that might start to grow just a little bit away, that's a good thing to do. Just either spritz them with a little bit of vinegar or you can even rinse them off in the sink with a little bit of vinegar water in the event that you see a hint of mold growing on them. But I'm gonna tuck these away in the refrigerator and just let them sit for a good two or three months and you'll know when it's time because they will have grown phenomenal roots. Some just a little bit behind, some way ahead of the others. I don't know what makes that happen, but it is so much fun to see after a couple of months just how many roots have grown and they are telling you they are ready to be planted. When these are ready to plant, you're going to want to prepare good, nice, rich potting soil in either a half gallon or a gallon sized pot. They are not planted like anything else I've seen before. These you're going to just make the tiniest little pencil hole or finger hole big enough for that root to fit down in, but you actually lay them flat side down right on the surface of the soil. Isn't that neat? And just tuck them in real good. Make sure that there's not a lot of air around that white root as you've tucked it into the soil. Let it have all the tucking in that it needs, but leave it right on the surface and you're going to keep the surface and that soil moist. And you're gonna notice after just a couple of weeks, the beauty of how these start sprouting right out of the tip where that root went down, the root will split in two and up will come the little baby tree right out of the center of the root. It's so interesting. This is just what you wanna see. Now, these that I've got, that I'm showing you are just a few of the many that I've got started. And these are growing well. You can see the, the leaves are healthy. They are split exactly right out of that little root that I mentioned before. But the beautiful thing is that almost like the spaceship going off into space and how it separates from the rocket boosters or whatever that is, that phenomenon, these nuts carry everything that that tree is going to need to grow strong and healthy, but it does literally break loose once these are well established and that root is drawing all the nutrition from the soil and they don't need it anymore. It's just there to get them good and started and give them everything they need at the beginning. And then you'll take those nuts and cast them somewhere where the little uh, squirrels or local animals will come and enjoy them for their own treat. You don't wanna let these get waterlogged, but you do wanna keep them nice and moist and with at least about six hours of good sunlight every day. I've kept mine right out here in the sun. And as I record this little part of this episode, it's already mid June and you can see how the very same nuts that you saw getting started here they are and what they look like. I mean, some of them are over two feet tall and it's 
exciting to watch how fast these grow. But every couple of months, you're gonna wanna make sure they have a good fertilizer added to them. And my favorite that I've found so far is this Dr. Earth Natural Wonder Organic uh, fertilizer. This is good for all nut trees. And so this is a fantastic fertilizer to just put a little scoop of either in the water to make tea or right into each of their pots so that they can thrive. Now, when these get established, they're going to grow tall and strong and they're going to produce beautiful flowers in the spring. But I have to warn you, even me, I don't know of any allergies I have, but if I walk under a chestnut tree when it is in full bloom, oh, about mid-June or July, I can't tell you how much it will make me do a little bit of sneezing and coughing and wheezing, and I just move away. It's okay. Get out of the range of it for a little while or don't be downwind. It, it is beautiful to look at, but a lot of people find, especially those who are allergic to any kind of latex, might find that they're just a little allergic to those blooms that, that come on. However, those quickly turn into the most unique burrs, green, big, prickly burrs that are going to grow right where those flowers were and they will fall off the tree and then tucked inside of those as they start to splay open as they hit the ground, you'll notice you'll find usually about three chestnuts all nestled together, just cocooned in that perfect little pod almost. I'm sure it has a very specific botanical name and I'm getting it wrong, but that burr is going to splay open and reveal the wonderful chestnuts that are inside. That's my favorite time to harvest them right then because you'll notice the older they get, the harder the interior is such that you wouldn't even eat it once it gets really hard and dry. But the outside shell is exceptionally hard as well once they get old and dry. But when they're fresh, you can take your fingernail and literally just uh, run it along the surface and take that top coating off and have a wonderful treat of raw chestnuts. Now about a fourth of a cup of these is a good amount to eat. Oxalic acid is in these, but not even as much as almonds. So don't think I'm giving you a very strong warning here. I just want you to know that if you can't handle the oxalic acid in almonds because you might have kidney problems or something, just uh, know that these do have some of that in them. But a fourth of a cup is a great amount for a serving size. It has about 70 to 100 calories somewhere right in there, has lots of protein, has an exceptional amount of vitamin C and all kinds of minerals. It's a good source of copper. Um, it has very little fat, so don't eat it as a, a source of fat, but it is high in carbohydrate. And you might think, well, that's not good, but I'm telling you in an emergency situation, it's very hard to forage for any food in the wild that's going to be high in carbohydrates. So this is one of the answers I want to give you as a solution. You want to get chestnuts growing on your little postage stamp or your big farm. I don't know where you are, but it's worthwhile to order some of these this Christmas. Go ahead and get some propagated and get them started so you can have your own covert forest that's going to feed you and many others in the event of a crisis where you don't have another good supply of all of these vitamins and minerals and high carbohydrates, and they're good. My mouth is watering talking about it right now. Let me just tell you, these are a nut that's naturally sweet. So you're getting that nutty flavor, um, but, but a, a natural sweetness that's just enjoyable in your mouth. When you eat them raw, it's, um, as long as they're fresh, they're very, um, midpoint between soft and solid. So it has a good bite to it, but it doesn't break your teeth or anything like that. Um, and then when you roast them, you can roast them all the way till they're just as soft and squishy as anything and eat them almost like a mashed potato texture. You can get them that soft when you roast them or boil them or steam them. I'll make sure I have linked down below a couple of different ways that you can fix these for yourself. But I know that however you eat them, you're going to absolutely enjoy them. All right, I've probably gone on long enough. I hope you're excited though to see what you can do 
just by thinking outside the box a little bit. And I'll tell you, chestnuts are not the only thing you can buy and enjoy or, or have a friend give you a bag of. And once you've eaten as many as you'd like, go ahead and try to propagate and grow your own. It's a fantastic way to get a wonderful covert garden going in your area. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope that you go out and research all the wonderful things about chestnut trees and how you can identify them in the wild, how you can get them growing in your area. But until I see you again, will you make it a point to go out and find someone who needs you to be their blessing? And would you be that to them today? We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. <laughs>Hey, before you go, I would love to share a quick word of scripture. This is out of the New Testament in the Holy Bible, out of the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. And it says this, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of your flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God in the day of his visitation. It's getting dark out there. Now go out and glow.